The Margaret Rudin case got nationwide attention as the infamous Las Vegas killer gets set for release from prison. We tracked down one of the lead detectives on the case and he walks us through the evidence and the archive at the Clark County Regional Justice Center in this digital exclusive. Uh, this is a picture of the glamour shot? This is a uh, Polaroid of the glamour shot and this is exactly what it looked like from edge to edge. Um, and it was hanging in a pretty ornate frame right above the bed, uh, centered right on the bed. And the blood, the high velocity mist was right in this direction here, which fit perfectly with our theory that he was shot while he was asleep because this is the way his head was. Mm -hmm. The glamour shot would have been like this. And then there's this um, phenomenon called high velocity mist. Mm -hmm. When a bullet enters the enclosed skull and creates a hole, the subsequent bullets that come in there have so much pressure and velocity that it sends blood flying out of the hole that was made by previous shots. Mm -hmm. And that's how the blood spatter got on the picture. And she never looked close enough to see that until she had it taken down and, was, and had uh, Augustine Lovato clean it up the place. Mm -hmm. and she, this is what she took to the photography studio and said, can you, my, my grandkids got chocolate syrup on my picture, can you clean it up for me, is what she told them. And the lady said, sure, no problem. And then she saw the news and she called us and said, I think I have something here that you might be interested in. How crucial was that, that glamour shot? It was, um, it was one of the most compelling pieces of evidence that we had because we knew exactly where it was. There was no argument where the picture was. And then it was a matter of trying to explain legitimately how high velocity mist from Ron's head got onto this picture. And there was only one way that could have happened. It wasn't from him picking his nose and flicking it on the scene or anything like that. The only way that could have happened was a result of gunshots going into his head. Emily, anything at all before we move on? super interesting. Sorry, I'm just listening. Oh, yeah, that was pretty, yeah. it was pretty, um, pretty compelling. And then I don't know, was thumb through these photos. Yeah, yeah, so this, is, uh, this was back in Revere. This was part of her uh, disguise, her looks kit. Uh, this was, that's Jimmy Richter. My partner, Jimmy Vaccaro. Um, this was the apartment complex in um, Revere, a little suburb of Boston, where she was captured. There's her wigs to go along with, you know, disguising who she was. Fake IDs. Um, That's what she used to basically yeah. trick authorities. Right. This is exactly what it is. And this, these are passport photos. And you can see that, that that's actually Margaret, but with a wig and makeup. And this picture here is the actual Annette Boatwright and she was assuming her identity. She had stolen Annette's uh, driver's license from uh, her home in Arizona. Uh, this was a surveillance. This is, oh, this is the Yehuda, Yehuda Sharon. That's Yehuda, this is LAX. After, um, we were, after we had served the search warrants at the house, she called Yehuda and says, I gotta get out of town, obviously. So they drove, we had them followed, and surveilled from Vegas to LAX, and. LAPD took these photos of her and Yehuda, I forget which gate it was, but she was headed back home. Um, and home was? Yeah, the Chicago area. Chicago. And uh, she tried to deny that, no, that never happened. That's not Los Angeles International Airport. This is, uh, I was waiting for a friend at McCarran International Airport and she denied that that was Yehuda. But obviously it was. And, and here they are talking and um, before she got on the plane. So the LA guys did a pretty good job of surveilling her. So you had undercover guys that mm -hmm. were following her and they were able yeah. to snap yeah. these? Yeah, in fact, um, we surveilled her to state line um, and the LASO met us at state line and gave them a complete description. They took over the, surve the movie surveillance of the car mm -hmm. and once it got to LAX, they were able to get all of these pictures and they had no idea that, that they were being followed, none at all. Wow. How did she meet you, Hilda Sharon? How did she meet him? Yeah. Uh, at the Las Vegas Country Club. It's behind the, well, now it's called the Westgate, but it was the Hilton at the time. And, and it was a place where, you know, really influential people lived and socialized there. That's how. He was the, um, the ladies guy of the club. That's all he did was go there to try and meet rich women and, and befriend them. I think there's a name for that, but I'm not, I'm not sure how it's spelled. <laughs>
They were a match made in heaven, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, these are all. But what's it like seeing the gun again now? It, it just it, it takes me back to all the little things that fell into place to make this case as, as uh, solid as it was. You know, a, a freak encounter by a guy that was out scuba diving and he finds a murder weapon unbeknownst to him and he did the right thing. He turned it in to the park rangers and the park rangers called Metro and said, hey, we got a gun out here. And they said, yeah, okay, thanks. We put it in the evidence vault. Um, one little slip in that series of events and we wouldn't have been able to connect that. And, and that's why Tory Johnson was so valuable in his expertise and, and recognizing the unique marks that were on the bullets that came from his skull to the bullets that came out of that gun. He, he, he remembered, he goes, man, I've seen these bullets somewhere before. Where have I seen them? And he put two and two together. I mean, the guy should have got a medal for that. And what was it like when you got the smoking gun, I guess? Oh, yeah, I mean, that was the eureka moment. I mean, I, I mean I'm sitting down at my desk and my partners, you know, we get the phone call from Tory Johnson. He goes, you're not gonna believe this. I said, what, Tory? did you win the lottery or something? He goes, no, but you guys just did. I said, what's that? He goes, I have the murder weapon. I'm Ron Rudin. I almost dropped the phone. Wow, that's unbelievable. Yeah. It would be the, the grand slam if you, you know, if you were able to get it because we could look at it and see what it did. Spots were removed from it, oh. and it just jumps out at you. This is his uh, funeral book. Oh. Uh -huh. These must be cards. She, those pictures of them at the airport, that's when she was Item that we saw photographed earlier yeah. from her items from right. Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. She sure liked pictures of herself. She did. <laughs> this isn't a, a poster for Don't touch. what she's, you know. <laughs> For doing or, or trying to do something like, like I don't know what is. She might as well just make a sign that says, "Yeah, what yeah she's trying to do." I'm hiding. Don't you Not have that at home? For, yeah. Can you take it out of there? Yeah. Did you take out his license? That, that address is his office, 5112 West Charleston Boulevard.